Good evening, and thank you for joining us for the Offer Accepted Show, a show for home buyers in a seller's market. My name is John Taylor, and I'm here to help you get the home of your dreams, get your offer accepted, and get you into that forever home. The news is filled with stories of houses selling for way above asking price, and there's no houses out there, but the market is shifting. There's more homes, there's more lumber to build new, new homes. So a lot of the people who have the older homes are selling them. So the market is starting to settle into a healthy market where there's an equal amount of buyers and sellers. So the interest rates are still fantastic. They're still under 3% in a lot of cases. And there's a great opportunity for you to get a bigger house than you may have been able to get when the interest rates were much higher. Nobody knows how long these interest rates are gonna stay where they're at, but we're gonna give you enough information so that you can make your best decision, make your best judgment call on when it's right for you to get your home. This episode is brought to you by HomeWire Realty. Missy Buttram over at HomeWire has a great staff, a great team that can help you find your home, help you list your home, and they even have access to inventory that may not hit the market. Now, they purchase homes that can be bought for cash. People who don't want to have a whole bunch of people tromping through their house or they just want to get rid of the property. They may be out of state. There's a lot of reasons. They have access to this inventory because they're always looking for new properties that they can get. This gives you access to properties that may not hit the MLS or other agents may not have. So it's a great opportunity for you to get a very unique home. In this episode, we're gonna talk about buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse happens when we make a poor decision based on the market moving so fast. There seems this pressure where you have to get the offer in and, and there's so much commotion. The best way to not have buyer's remorse is to get a really good team of people around you. So when you're making that really big decision, you have everything in front of you to, to make sure that you make a good decision. So that when you get that home of your dreams, you can deal with a few things that might be wrong with it or be okay with what you paid for it. So let's get started with Missy and we're gonna talk a little bit about what to look for in a home and, and how to go through the buying process. Then we're gonna to talk to Chris Wenninger from Fairway Independent Mortgage to discuss the money. And finally, Al's gonna wrap up with some legal information of if you put an offer in, can you get out of it? and what that would look like. So let's get started with Missy. Buyer's remorse. We don't want to have it when we're buying a new home. You know, we're out there and we're making these decisions so quickly and there is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of energy to do this fast, get your offer in. And, um, you know, you might not be checking all the boxes. So, you know, what is buyer's remorse? Unfortunately, with the way the market is, buyer's remorse is happening. Um, it's the feeling of regret, resentment, not feeling that they made the right decision on buying something, whether it's a house, a car. Um, and that can happen during the, the process and we haven't closed yet, or it can be after they get into the house. So it does happen. With all of this pressure, it's it is possible to get a bad deal. And so you really want to focus on how you can get a good deal. So if you do get your offer accepted, it's for that house of your dreams. So you can have that barbecue and it's going to be wonderful. As a buyer, how can you avoid having buyer's remorse and getting a deal, good deal? So when your offer does get accepted, you're happy about it. Right. Very important. Feel good about your decision. It's one of the biggest purchases we make in our lives. So to avoid it, make sure you're prepared. We talk about that a lot in these episodes, and buyers need to do their homework. Um, make sure that neighborhood is the neighborhood they want to be in. Uh, do their research online, whether there's schools, crime, all those things. A lot of people don't know as a realtor, I can't say, oh, this is a great neighborhood, or I can't say that you know the crime is this. They have to do their own research. I'm not allowed to tell them those things. Um, another thing is to watch the home values. Now, as a buyer's agent, I can help you with that. I'm going to help you find the values. Do some homework before beforehand. I think that's a really good point to understand what a buyer's agent can and can't do. I didn't know that you couldn't tell people about the crime rate or the good neighborhood. And I think one way to understand how a neighborhood 
is and what kind of people live there and if you want to be their neighbors is to go to that neighborhood go for a walk go to the local grocery Especially on store a saturday or sunday like right? people are out and about do some drive-bys i know it sounds a little creepy but mm -hmm. it's the best thing to do really and you can you're allowed to talk to your neighbors your new potential neighbors <laughs> you know go say hey you know, we're the Coopers, and we're going to move in yeah. over there if, if that hey, works out. We like that house across the street from you. Do you, you know, do you like this neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and they might tell you that the person who lives next door to you is weird, and you don't want to live there. <laughs> um, so as an agent, how do you help your buyers? You talk a lot about being prepared. You know, how can you help the buyers uh, avoid that remorse? Okay, so as a buyer's agent, I do some research myself. Um, I put together a market analysis. Is it priced right? Um, what are things going for in that area? Um, the other thing I'm doing is checking out the condition report, which is usually attached in the MLS listing. Make sure there isn't anything um, obviously wrong with it. Of course, we do some looking of ourselves when we go, but at least have that knowledge behind us. Be prepared and always know that uh, if you have a good team next to you and you're, you're, when you're looking at your home, you can get your offer accepted and, and not have that remorse. You know, earlier we talked about uh, uh, Home Buyer 101, and I think that was in episode three, and I talked a little bit about the process of buying a home, and if you haven't seen that episode, definitely go back. But let's just review uh, one important uh, uh, point. If you see a house for sale, let's say you're you know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, and there's a name and number on that sign, should you call that sign or should you call your buyer's agent? Great question, a great point to bring up again. Um, be sure to have your own representation. Have a buyer's agent that's been working with you. No matter who is listing that home, your buyer's agents can take you through that home and work for you to get the best price and get through all the steps with you with negotiation, paperwork, and get you to closing. A seller's agent is going to look to get the most amount of money for that house because they the get seller. paid commission yep. based on the sales price. So having your buyer's agent on your side is going to help you avoid buyer's remorse. I would love to hear a success story about somebody who's avoided buyer's remorse. Do you have any? I do. Um, I've been having some success the last few weeks with my buyers. Um, family, Bev and Dave, found a home in the Waukesha, Pewaukee area. Um, they had been looking um, very, you know, very particular in what they want, what area they want. And the cool thing about this one was is that it went off the market and came back on. It had an accepted offer. Something happened where there was some buyer's remorse. Um, came back on the market and they were able to go in there and get it and actually for a little bit less than asking. <laughs> that is great news. That doesn't happen very often right now. <laughs> yes, there are good deals out there. There is the ability to purchase something um, you know, for less than asking price. And let's touch on that. If you see a house and it's listed for 300000 and you feel it's only worth two hundred and eighty or 260 are you allowed to make an offer like that in this market or can you only offer what it's what they're asking or higher another good point um, yes you can um, put in any offer you want um, you work with your buyer's agent to come up with a good value um, the other thing I do as a buyer's agent is I'm going to call the listing agent find out some things that I can find out and that they can tell me if there's other offers on the table that's going to affect it um, when they are going to review offers and what is a great closing date for that seller? So there's things that we can be flexible with that might be appealing on an offer. I do that homework ahead of time. So let's say there isn't a lot of offers going on. Um, maybe we wouldn't be as shy to write something that's right below asking. And that's such a great point because there are a lot of homes that are out there that are overpriced. They're, yes, they're trying to get in on this crazy market yep. and coming in high. For yeah, sure. they're trying to cash in. And so not everybody is going to be out there willing to pay that. I'm seeing a lot of houses that are out there that are absolutely way too high. And then I'm watching them over the weeks drop 11000 drop 20000 So um, yeah. there are overpriced homes. So don't be shy about 
offering what you feel is a good deal because ultimately that is the most important thing in getting your offer accepted. Coming up next, John's going to talk to the great people over at Simma's Bakery in Wauwatosa. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Wauwatosa and why it's such a great neighborhood to get your offer accepted. Welcome back. We have Chris Wenninger from Fairway Independent Mortgage here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about buyer's remorse, how to avoid it, making sure that you can get a good deal, get your offer accepted, and be happy about your purchase. In this market, things are moving so fast, and there is so much energy happening. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing. What is buyer's remorse from the mortgage side? Buyer's remorse, we take a look at if a buyer purchases a house, they hurry up, quick, get, get into something. And I was there like, oh my God, what did I do? Uh, how can we avoid that? We take a look at planning and you're going to hear me talk over and over on this again, as far as what is your budget? Know your budget, know your limits as far as for the purchase price limits and for your payment limits. And why do I distinguish between the two? Because in essence, depending upon what area you purchase in, the property taxes could be different, therefore affecting your monthly payment. So really getting a good understanding of your entire mortgage payment. Sometimes when you use an online calculator, it'll just talk about the principal, but you know, Shorewood has much different taxes than Milwaukee or different parts of Milwaukee. So understanding that also PMI insurance, that can be, that can be a variable to, to add to your, your thing. And of course, interest rate. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things, are going to really affect your monthly payment. As a buyer, you know, how can you avoid this happening? What are some steps that our, our listeners could take to, you know, really make, you know, some concrete steps into planning? You want to take a look at, again, I go back to the budget as far as what you feel comfortable with in a payment, and also really take a look at the location that you want to purchase. And is it going to be conducive to where your schooling is? Maybe the kids are have to switch schools. Is it going to be conducive as far as for your work? Are you going to have to drive a little bit farther? Now, with gas prices going up at this moment in time, that's going to affect your monthly budget as well, too. So when you take a look at it, not only your budget, but you also want to take it the location. What is going to be conducive to you and your family? I had a recent story where customers, they purchased their dream home as a ranch house out in the country. They absolutely loved it, but they had two young boys going to high school. And you know what, with high school, there's a lot of different after school activities. So they had to shuttle or find a way to shuttle the kids back and forth. Now the parents are working during the day and it just wasn't conducive to their lifestyle. So less than two years, they end up selling the house, moving back in the town so the kids can walk back and forth to school. So that is a great example of one to be in the consideration when you take a look at location. Take a look at the location, go to the neighborhood, meet the neighbors. Mm -hmm and uh, see if that's the neighborhood that you would like to live in. As a loan officer, how can you help a buyer avoid uh, buyer's remorse? You know, there's so much energy that goes into buying a house, especially in this marketplace, as far as you just want to get win the bid and get that offer accepted. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to take a look at a third party person view, look down over their finances, take a look at, is this going to be right for their monthly budget? In addition to, we talk about what are the big purchases are you going to have to come up with in the future? And we have good solid conversations about that to make sure that this is going to be right for them. Having objective people on your team to keep you level-headed in this market that has so much energy and there's so much rush uh, is really going to help you get a good deal, uh, get your offer accepted, and you're going to be happy about it as you go down the road. So that's really important. Do you have a success story you could share with us? You know, we have one where recently where a customer had to hurry up, get into the house and they weren't quite sure as far as for the condition of it. So what they did is they closed. The first thing they did is they had a home inspection. They were taking on the condition of the house and they realized that. So they understood if there's anything that comes up on the home inspection that's effective, it is all theirs. But it made them feel more comfortable knowing, okay, this is what I have to do, or maybe this is what I don't have to do or worry about getting in. So that's just one option to have these days. If you're not able to put a home inspection in with your offer to purchase, get one right before you end up moving in. 
That is great advice. Thank you so much, Chris. You're and we'll welcome. see you next week. Thank you for having me. We talk a little bit about preparing, understanding the location, the neighborhoods, and all the things that we should do before we go and make that offer. What are some things we should do from the legal standpoint of making sure that we have our team aligned? Well, we want to make sure that we get all the professionals in the building, in the house, or in the whatever we're buying, uh, before we make the offer, if at all possible. Uh, so get the inspector there, have our, have our assessor or our uh, appraiser go and give us an idea that this is worth about what we think it's worth, particularly in this market, because things are a little wacky right now. And then even get, if there's a surveyor that needs to come in and validate, yep, yeah, your land includes that woods or that whatever, get, get as much information in your pocket as you can before you leave. Yeah, having your team in place so that um, the, you can make that offer quickly. Correct. What are you seeing in the market right now? Because it is a, a highly energized market and people are making offers quickly. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure from all sides to, to you know, get that offer in and um, some people are paying too much. P people are paying too much. And what I'm seeing is uh, we're getting past sort of uh, moving quickly and getting into some reckl recklessness in the way that people are making offers. And part of it's driven by uh, what the market is. I mean, some of, part of the market right now is if you're willing to be reckless, if you're willing to offer way over asking price and have no contingencies and no financing and no inspection, you're going to get the property. And that's the mindset that sellers love, but that gets buyers in trouble because they're going to make poor choices and really they're getting rewarded for making poor choices. What are three things we should do in preparing for getting that new home uh, just to make sure that we're legally covered. Sure. Uh, thing number one, uh, get your financing worked out and get a hard limit on what you're willing to spend. It's so so easy to get a house that we fall in love with and go, okay, well, I guess we can add another 10 or another 20 or whatever it is. And that might be over what the bank's willing to approve. Or even worse, it might be over what we're able to afford. So get a hard limit. Get yourself some hard um, sort of to, uh, top figures, especially top. No one worries about the bottom figures, um, about what we can afford. Uh, second, get some specifics. You know, I always tell people going into a negotiation, uh, for a lot of cases, what are the things that you absolutely need? And it might be a short list, it might be a long list, but that'll help you weed out houses that are really pretty but don't get what you need. You know, maybe you need two bathrooms because you got three kids and you find a really place, a place you really love, but it's got one bathroom. As much as you might fall for that place because you love you know, the, the land or whatever, that place isn't going to work for you. So get yourself a set of criteria that will allow you to scratch things off the list. And then the third thing is get a team ready to jump when you're ready to make a move on things. Have, have your realtor that you want to work, work with. Have your lawyer that's ready to review any legal documents that are necessary. And have your, you know, have your financing people at the ready where they've pre-approved you. They have all the documents they need in order to give you the, uh, the approval letter that you're going to need. And they have all the other terms that they want included in an offer so that everybody's talking before you start instead of everyone trying to untangle things after you've already jumped in unwittingly. If you get your offer accepted and you are moving fast, you've done all the things that you're supposed to do, your team's aligned, but let's say you make a mistake. Sure. What can we do? Well, depending on the mistake and depending on how well you've prepared, we've got some options. Um, a lot of times when we draft an offer, if it's a quick moving situation and a lawyer drafts the offer, we'll put in what's called a right to rescind. So we'll say, all right, we're going to get this offer in, it'll get accepted, and the buyer, or sometimes even both parties, have the right to rescind, to back out of that offer with no consequences for a week or for two weeks or for three days or whatever it is. And if you have something like that built in, you've got an escape hatch if there's been a big mistake made as far as committing to something, or maybe you've made two offers and they've both been accepted because you were throwing offers all over the place. So that's a that's a key one as far as what you can do and what you can have in that offer to protect yourself. Are you seeing um, the right to rescind in 
offers now, or is that something that's being less uh, less prevalent in offers lately? It's a little less prevalent. I think it's something that might come back into vogue because we're seeing you know less financing contingencies, less inspection contingencies. So at least with the right to rescind, you've got a few days, even if it's five days, to get your inspector in there and tell you, okay, I can't do a full inspection, but I can tell you if this place is about to collapse. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, and it's really no skin off of the seller's back. I mean, if they're a person of integrity who's selling you a different house, it's pretty reasonable to say, hey, we just want three days to make sure, let the smoke clear a little bit. And so I see it, it's coming back a little bit. I've drafted them recently into an offer, so they're around. Being prepared, having your budget in order, making sure you check out the location, and having your team on the ready will help you get your offer accepted without buyer's remorse. Thanks so much for stopping by again, Al. Absolutely, my pleasure. I really like the information that Al gave us about having a right to rescind in the offer. It's not common, but as the market's starting to even out a little bit, you're gonna see more of those come into play. It gives us an opportunity to make sure that we get a really good house, that we don't get something that we might get stuck with, you know? There's a lot of new things happening. There's a right to um, waive the appraisal or waive the inspection based on Fannie Mae data that's in there. And so having that right to rescind and to get out of the deal is gonna be really useful uh, in protecting yourself. And as the market straightens out, we're still going to want to get those appraisals and inspections to make sure that the home that we're buying is a solid house. Join us next week for the Offer Accepted Show, a show for home buyers in a seller's market. We want to help you get your dream home. Join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on the Offer Accepted Show. See you then.